Hey everyone! Normally I'd add rim lighting by adding a sun, positioning it behind my object, and then cranking up the brightness. But I was looking at the Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Pokedex as reference, and noticed that there were situations where the rim lighting should have been being obscured by shadows, and wasn't. And you can get a light object to do this in Blender by disabling its cast shadows, but it made me interested in trying to light my object by just selectively brightening certain normals. And I found that it actually came in handy in all sorts of situations. So let's head into the material shader. Here's my character's body material, which is just a basic principled shader with a texture. Just in case you're curious, I'll show you my textures and stuff real quick. Here's my leaf texture, here's the eye, and the body texture. I have multiple UV maps, which is why I'm using UV map nodes on my texture. The eyes are a separate material with their own UV maps so that they can be higher resolution than the rest of the body. And I've built in some texture mapping functionality so I can have the eyes blink. Now let's set up the fake rim lighting. I'm going to disconnect the image texture for now so I can show you what all the nodes are doing. First node we need is the geometry node. We're going to be using our object's normals. This just tells us which direction our faces are pointing. Next is a texture coordinate node, and for this node we're going to want to use the coordinates from an empty. So in the 3D viewport, add an empty. Position it somewhere in here, then make sure your character is selected, and then on the texture coordinate node, click in this box. You can choose the empty from the drop-down list, or select it with the eyedropper in the viewport. And if we connect this to the shader and move the empty around, we can see what it's doing. Texture coordinates are being projected onto our model as colors based on the XYZ location of our empty. With just these two pieces of vector information, we can fake the rim lighting. So now let's combine these two nodes with the vector math node. Click the vector math nodes drop down and choose dot product. And then reconnect the vector math node to the shader color and wait for the shader to compile. The definition of dot product is very mathy, but essentially the normals that face towards the empty will be assigned a lower value or black, and the normals that face away will be assigned a higher value or white. So now our empty is functioning very similarly to a light. We're going to use this dot product output as a mix factor to light our object now. So disconnect it from the shader and reconnect the texture to the shader. Now add an emission shader, find and add a mix shader, Then connect the dot product output to the mix shader. This is looking kind of weird, so let's swap the locations of the shader on the mix node. And that looks better. Now let's add a color ramp and plonk it down on this line. Flip the location of these color stops on the ramp. And slide this black stop very close to the white stop. Moving the empty will adjust the direction of the lighting. So now we've got quite a bit of control over our lighting. We can change how soft the lighting is with the color ramp stops. Using the emission shader, we can change the color of the rim lighting to all sorts of crazy stuff. And by adjusting the colors on the color ramp, you can change how the lighting is mixed. So there's a ton of options. There are quite a few ways to vary this setup to suit your needs. Using a combined XYZ node in place of the empty location allows you to set the lighting rotation from within the shader. One important thing that I forgot to mention about the lighting color first, if you connect your texture to the emission shader color input and turn up the strength, it looks pretty nice. And obviously if you have multiple materials, you need to set up this shader on all of them. If you don't want to use the location of an empty, you can just use an XYZ coordinate to determine the angle of your lighting, which would mean that the entirety of the lighting is contained within the material. However, the empty is advantageous because it has rotation and scale as well as location, so you can more easily fine-tune the look of your faked lighting. Thank you for watching! I hope you found this useful! Please like, subscribe, and leave us any questions or suggestions you have in the comments. If you'd like to help the channel grow, share a video! We also have a Patreon! Thanks again! Stay safe! I love you all! Goodbye!